Hi, I'm Norman Perola from uh, Perola Design and Wood Skills, and I'm a furniture designer maker and a woodworking educator. Today, I'd like to provide insight into the Mox and Vice. The Mox and Vice, uh, this example, uses bench crafted hardware and locally sourced maple uh, boards from my own inventory. So, I like the, uh, the simplicity of the Mox and Vice. It originates from a 300 year old design. The Mox and Vice design is attributed to uh, Joseph Moxon. 400 years ago, a Moxon 17th century book, The Art of Joinery, first described the double screw vise, basically a double screw vise, but because he, uh, he designed it, invented it, it's attributed to him, so it's called, it's normally called the Moxon vise. The Moxon documented the uh, Moxon vise. The following is a uh, brief description. A double screw vise held to a workbench top with clamps or holdfast to facilitate certain work. Um, this is the modified design, my own design, the, normally it has ears on the side that extend out and um, this will allow it to be clamped to the work, workbench surface with uh, F clamps. But I didn't like the aesthetic of that so I, I redesigned it to incorporate the actual uh, clamping within the Mox and Vice itself. So it's a cleaner design and it's actually clamped through the back and I'll, I'll delve into that in depth later on. So the advantage of a Mox and Vice and the premise of a Mox and Vice is to raise the height of your work. You don't need to be seated or to stoop down over a workbench when you're using this. The workpiece is, is, is a few inches higher from the workbench surface so you can actually work at it better. So it excels at uh, when you're doing detail work. I use it for dovetails when I'm creating dovetails, sawing dovetails and that sort of thing and doing more detail work. And I've also added a little surface in the back and I'll show that in depth to be able to work on the uh, <clears throat> on the dovetails a little better. The bench crafted uh, Mox and Vice hardware kit includes uh, the cast hand wheels, Acme threaded screws, and nuts, washers, and the material to line one of the jaws, the inside portion of the jaw. The Mox and Vice design can be adapted to any uh, hardware you choose. You don't necessarily have to use this hardware. I selected off the shelf ben bench crafted hardware. It's well engineered beefy and saves my time of uh, sourcing hardware components. So I'll show the functionality and key areas of the build in the following video and how I moved away from uh, the conventional Mox and Vice design and made some improvements as I already mentioned. I've uh, integrated the, the, uh, the actual holding of the or clamping of the Mox and Vice is integral to the Mox and Vice now as opposed to having two outboard ears uh, which you'll probably see in most Mox and Vice designs. So I'll also talk about and give a demonstration of how I use the Mox and Vice in my furniture making and my woodworking. So enjoy! I'm Norm Perlo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through the furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So this is the, uh, the Moxon Vise, the portable Vise. It's uh, very substantial, heavy. I use uh, bench crafted hardware which consists of uh, two hand wheels, two uh, acne threaded lead screws, two nuts, and a washer. So the, the Vise itself doesn't have a, a garter. What a garter does is it actually pulls pulls the front jaw back when you're un, uh, undoing the hand wheels. So it's, it's a very very straightforward and simplified because of that uh, the fact that there isn't a garter there. So it's it's a little easier to install because of it. The components are the, the front or movable jaw which retracts forward and clamps against your workpiece, and the fixed rear jaw. Uh, there is some other wood in the back to stabilize it to keep it perpendicular to your work surface and the concept behind it is uh, the uh, front jaw is actually uh, deeper or uh, wider than the rear jaw by approximately an eighth of an inch and what this does is that uh, when you're uh, locating your uh, registering the, uh, the box and wise against your workbench that extra eighth of an inch 
serves to register it against the edge of the of the uh, workbench so it's fairly straightforward to install and to remove and I'll show that in a second so so here I'll just go through the motions of uh, the forward now the actual jaw the, uh, the, the capacity is limited to the, uh, the length of the Acme threaded screws so I think limit is about two inches or so two and a half inches which is more than sufficient for uh, your standard size panels. So what I've done is I've customized the, the width of this to and I've optimized it to the type of work I do. The distance between the two Acme uh, screws is approximately 20 inches which is more than sufficient for the type of uh, work holding or clamping I do and uh, it allows me to clamp uh, boards so I can dovetail them. I, I saw them and uh, it also allows me to clamp uh, longer boards, longer panels from the, uh, from the floor up. So it has that versatility. But the, uh, the main uh, advantage to having a, this portable with mocks and vise is it raises your workpiece above the workbench by approximately five and a half inches. So uh, when you're sawing dovetails, for example, you, uh, you can saw them at this height instead of a lower height. So you can stand and it's not, you know, you're not as stooping as much uh, into getting into the work so you can actually see it clear and everything. So this is a primary advantage of a moxin vise. It brings it, draws it work closer to your vision, to your uh, eyesight. And in, and in fact, it, it is uh, portable so you can remove it and, uh, and move it around the workbench. So I've placed it here in this position but I can easily offset it from one way or the other. I don't need to offset it there, there's a vise there now but I can flip it and, and locate it uh, along the other uh, edge of my workbench and I have a second similar workbench that I can move it over so it's, it's quite versatile and portable in that aspect. What I've done is I've, uh, the actual concept behind the box and vise dates 300 years so it's an old concept and it's, this is a very modern version of, uh, of the, uh, the ancient version of it. The ancient version had uh, wooden uh, threaded uh, screws with wood handles. So what I've done is I've added an extension table so I can uh, register dovetails so I can transfer the, uh, the tail, tails to the pin board and uh, do some pounding here and I've reinforced the bottom so I can pound at the leading edge of the extended table and the back also so I've had a vertical support. There's a so-called stabilizer block at the back that I'll show in a second and what it does is it, uh, it attaches to the rear jaw and it's used to uh, both uh, keep the uh, is a base for the, uh, the pads on the uh, on the holdfasts and to keep it everything square. So there are different methods of attaching mocks and vises to a workbench surface. In most cases, they extend the rear jaw out to two uh, wings or two tabs, and the tabs are used to with uh, in conjunction with uh, F clamps or bar clamps to bolt it down. I don't like the aesthetic of that, so I just wanted to get away from that, that extended thing. I, I like a cleaner look, a nicer aesthetic. So I opted for the uh, hold fasts, and this got above my expectations with the hold fasts for the ease of removing and installing this and the, the, uh, how, how rigid this is and stable on the workbench. It's, uh, it's, it's like you, can be, you can almost move the workbench when you're trying to push this and back. So I'll give an example of removing it. and. Uh, it just, just consists of tapping the back of the hold fast and swinging them around. So I've designed, designed it so the hold fast swing around and uh, you can actually keep the hold fast at the uh, workbench uh, until you, you need it again or move the hold fast around. But I use hold fast for, for clamping other work pieces to the workbench. So they're very uh, versatile and portable in themselves. So I'll uh, actually move to, uh, I'll show you what the back of the uh, Mox and Vise looks like. and. Uh, and the large nuts that come with it. So I'll give a uh, uh, little more, a different view of the Moxon vise. I'll give you a demonstration of how to remove the Moxon vise from the uh, workbench surface and to reattach it. So it's done through hold fasts. These are Gramercy hold fasts. They're fairly inexpensive and they, they do an exceptional job holding work pieces off on the, onto the workbench. So uh, normally for the hold fast, what you do to uh, to unclamp it is you just tap it at the back. So, and then, uh, so I swing them around, and then all of a sudden my Moxon vise is portable. So you can see the portability. 
And this is the uh, rear view of the Mox and Vice. So what I have here is uh, I'm holding the actual table and I use this to uh, move it around. Although I should be using the jaws, but you can see the uh, vertical support for the table, the stabilizer block, the large stabilizer block. This is what I've had on hand. So uh, you can, you can I, I don't know, I'll explain that further. You can either build this with eight quarter wood. This is a uh, Nominally about an inch and three quarters for each jaw. Actually, it's accurately an inch and three quarters. So the recommended uh, procedure is to use eight quarter or two inch nominal uh, chunks of wood that are at least six inches by uh, however length you you intend to do it, and then uh, dimension it correctly and machine the wood or hand plane the wood. What I've done is because I had uh, four quarter one inch boards, plenty of these boards from old uh, stock I have. I decided to laminate them, and I actually talk about this in, uh, in a write-up I've done for this, along with uh, detailed plans on, uh, on how to build this, and uh, all the diagrams and all the uh, dimensions, specific uh, accurate dimensions, and 3D uh, CAD drawings. So that's how the, uh, the Mox and Vice is attached to the workbench, so it's easily uh, configurable left or right. And uh, so to normally install it this way, I would just bring the whole flask back around, register it that eighth of an inch. I did mention earlier, align the whole flask, I just tap it, and that, that would be it. So these whole fasts are uh, optimized for three quarter inch holes, and you need at least two inches or an inch and three quarter of uh, workbench depth. For them to be effective. Here you can see the back and you can see the uh, the uh, large nuts and uh, this is this is the only hardware essentially the uh, large nuts, the hand wheel, the lead screw and there's a captive nut on the inside of the uh, of the rear jaw and I'll show that. So this is the stabilizer block and the whole fast sit on the, on the uh, stabilizer block and this is the vertical support the tables the table itself. I've chamfered all the edges on it so it doesn't have any sharp edges and uh, not, uh, not the faces, not the inside faces. And I've extended the uh, table support out to align with the, uh, the table itself so I can actually, uh, when I'm not using this at all on a workbench, I can have it uh, sitting upright vertically against the wall and it's only, uh, it has a six inch profile or less than six inch profile so it's fairly unobtrusive. And this is what I, I like about this. So that would be it. And I'll show you what the uh, what the captive nut looks like. Now, I mentioned earlier about the uh, mortising in the uh, rear nuts in the uh, inside face of the rear jaw, and that was incredibly time consuming. You don't need to do it that way. You can actually just simply uh, create a four sided square mortise and uh, insert the nut in. But the, I'll show you the aesthetic of the uh, six sided. More design created. So, so although it's more time consuming, it's a little more set, you know, provides more satisfaction. So I've actually got to just remove the hand wheel and the washer here. Careful because the uh, hand wheels are fairly uh, heavy. You will not use the drop because I think they're cast enough abs, I'm not sure. Like a chip or something, I'm not sure. So I'll just go ahead and remove them. You don't often need to do this or never ever need to do this unless you're performing maintenance on the, uh, the Mox and Vice. So I'll pull this off and it's a fairly tight fit. Uh, I'll also talk about the uh, liner. This is a Benchcraft provided liner material. So I've actually just glued it on the, uh, the uh, inside face of the movable jaw. So I'll just put this jaw aside. And I can show you this is the actual detail of the uh, six sided. Uh, there's an image coming up, but this is the actual detail, so it's. I spent a lot of time doing this because I just wanted it perfect, no mistakes or anything. I carefully use both, uh, I use both bevel edge and, uh, and uh, mortise chisels to bevel. and uh, mortise chisels, the bevel edge just to outline the, uh, the six-sided mortise and then the, the mortise chisels to actually gouge out or uh, hog out the, uh, the wood. There's a one and three quarter inch depth for the actual uh, Acme threaded screw, it's fairly solid. There's a rear nut as I shown earlier, no need to actually ever remove the jaw. 
unless, like I say, you're performing maintenance or disassembling the unit. So I'll put it back together and I'll show you what the clamping looks like. The actual threading we have wheels on is a little quicker, so you can actually spin them. Excuse me, I'm not quite in the uh, in the video, but I'm just trying to show you the detail. Uh, for example, I'm cutting the dovetails. I would uh, the, the procedure to to clamp the board in is to clamp, or just uh, bring it one to one to hand wheel in to where it's barely touching the uh, the board. Bring it along to where you want to locate it along the uh, the span of the uh, the jaw. So, Take that one more here. This is it. So just not much uh, clamping pressure need necessary. So this is incredibly strong. Now. So I grab a telltale saw, for example. These telltales are already cut. I don't have anything in progress at the moment, and I just go ahead and, and do this. So you can see the uh, height of the uh, boards are substantially higher. The uh, work uh, piece. So I would say about six inches higher than, uh, than a normal bench. High to 36 inches. This brings it up to 41 inches. I can do this standing up with the ease without any uh, without the need to stoop over or without any strain on my back or I can uh, be seated. So that's, that would be it and then uh, I'll just show you an example of a larger work piece. This is a fairly small work piece. This is a, a side of the drawer. This is a, a larger panel. If I would need it to work this for example and bring the jaw out and uh, see what you're saying. In the middle. So the beauty of the mock device is you can actually have extremely long panels from the floor up to this height. So I clamp it in here and this is the technique is to bring this in so it's barely touching the left hand side and then clamp it with the right. So, so this is uh, super strong. Let me just let it out here. So, so I can whatever operation I need to do here I create dovetails on this panel. Not this panel, it belongs to a uh, carcass of a cabinet on stand. So, so I'm doing the, uh, this is just as easy. This is actually super easy here. So, the, uh, so what I'll do next is I'll actually remove it and I'll show you what it looks like uh, on the side of a, of a wall at the bottom. So how uh, little profile it takes. But before doing that, I'll just, I'll just close it. Because this is how you would normally register. You have the both jaws together so you can register here. I'll just go ahead and uh, swing the wall fast up. This is normally not registered, so I'll grab that. That's I hold it there. This is what it looks like. You can see the uh, one eighth inch uh, overlay or the lip on the front edge on the front jaw, and this this is actually used to register it. And this is the bottom area. So this is the uh, the table support. The large stabilizer block. Uh, everything's been kind of planed on the surfaces, so everything's perpendicular to each other. So this is how the uh, Moxon vise uh, looks as it's uh, parked along the side of a, a wall when it's not in use. Uh, the fact that it's portable is ideal. So you can see how little space it takes. And I'm trying to give you a sense of scale here, so I show you some uh, some of my cabinets and everything else. So it's very unobtrusive. And you can you can uh, just slide it along any part of your a wall that isn't being used. So here again is a more detailed view of the uh, Moxon portable Moxon vise against the wall. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video and you've gained some insight on how a Moxon vise works and how to use it in your own woodworking and furniture making. My uh, unique design without the outboard years is more compact and works exclusively with holdfasts as you've seen in the video. So the Moxon Vice, uh, to summarize, the Moxon Vice brings the work closer to you while, while saving your back and your eyesight. So subscribe to my channel for more videos of uh, woodworking techniques and how I build the furniture. Please visit woodskills.com for uh, a selection of uh, my books and uh, my online woodworking courses which range from uh, basic woodworking to furniture design to design and making and more specific courses on dovetailing and uh, Kamiko. So uh, thank you for watching.